Welcome to the dark side. The flowers here live their own life. And today I will speak about perfumes where flowers have been transformed. They went to a darker side. But have you ever thought that when you go to a dark side, you find the light that you've never known? I will stop speaking mysteries now and I will go to the review of fragrances with florals that have darker character. And what better day could I choose than Halloween? These will be perfect Halloween perfumes. And you probably have already seen some Halloween perfume videos where they review most of designer fragrances that have darker bottles, like Poison by Dior or Cristal Noir by Versace. But this is not a typical video. I will speak about two brands that uh, you might have heard about or maybe not. And the first one that I would like to introduce to you is Laurent Maison. I pronounce it in a French manner because this is a French brand and I hope Mr. Mazzone, who is probably Italian, will not be upset about my pronunciation. So here I have two fragrances uh, that come from Radical Flower series. One of them is Radical Lotus and the other one is Radical Water Lily. I've selected these two because they are no longer available in full bottles, but uh, in the collection they also have a tuberose, iris and jasmine with the radical side. And if you look at the website of the brand, this is probably the most gothic vibe in the perfume world. In nature, lotus and water lily are probably the most delicate flowers in the floral world. But of course, this is not the case of Laurent Mazon. Radical lotus is not a lotus at all. It has lotus in the heart of the composition, but think about it. How could you get lotus when you have very strong notes like saffron, jasmine, and patchouli? Of course, lotus is getting lost in here. And I will tell you what, the fragrance actually is all about saffron. The radical lotus is saffron. This saffron comes out very quickly, killing Freesia and Guave, I did not even catch these notes at the opening, not really competing with Jasmine and Rose, and going straight to mixing with Patchouli. So Saffron and Patchouli with some kind of animalic vibe, this is the fragrance that you have, and I think it's more appropriate for gentlemen actually. So the mystery of Lotus has been revealed, and when it comes to Water Lily, it is even more mysterious. Water lily is a plant that a lot of people confuse with lotus, but it also has a very delicate smell and practically impossible to imitate in perfumes. So when you see a water lily, be skeptical. And of course, here there is no water lily even listed in the pyramid. But the fragrance actually is something very unusual. I'm going to spray it on a blotter. I already wore it on my skin. Now just let's refresh some memories the first impression soapy i definitely get jasmine and something bittery like lemon zest freesia and cyclamen they do make sense as well and when i was wearing this fragrance i was irritated by it for about half an hour because i don't like that soapy element that is pretty strong but then it starts fading away and when it starts fading away a very nice delicate bouquet starts blooming and that blooming is really fascinating. I can't really pull out the notes. The blend is just so homogeneous, so nicely made. And when I start enjoying it, it actually makes me think of some floral fragrances that work very well with my skin chemistry. Something like uh, the collection Rivers by Cartier. But unlike those fragrances that are closer to my skin, this one actually radiates for about 6-7 hours. It's not very intense, it irritates me only for an hour or so, and I have a feeling that I went through that soapy darkness to go into a beautiful floral garden. And it definitely goes on a lighter feminine side. To me, this is really a portrait of femininity. It makes me think of Aphrodite that comes from the foams of the sea. Well, Laurent Mazon definitely woke up my imagination and my curiosity about the brand. But for now, let's switch to another brand that does dark flowers. And look at the design of the samples. So here we have dark violet, iris and rose. This is a French brand, Olfactive Studio. And these three are coming from the collection Shots. And Shots 
are really concentrated extrait de parfum creations. Nowadays, it's very rare to find extrait de parfum. Eau de parfum is something very common for niche fragrances, but extrait de parfum are usually very expensive. Olfactive Studio has selective ingredients, but their prices remain not beyond the level of space. And what is especially pleasant is that you can get extrait de parfum in uh, little samples. I will start with the violet shot. I have already worn it on my skin and uh, in my opinion it's leaning more towards masculine side and it's not uh, so much floral in fact. At the beginning is very peppery. You get a lot of pink pepper. It's an overdose of pink pepper. In addition to pink pepper, you can find in the description mandarin and grassy accord, but to me, this pink pepper kills it all. And it takes a while for that violet to come out. It really takes time for that pink pepper to become smoother. And when it becomes smoother, there are some sweet accords and you think that it will develop into sweeter direction, but it does not go into a sweet direction. It goes into direction of leather. And what a surprise, when I search for violet, I actually find leather. And it makes me think of some fragrances where leather is created with a note of tomato leaves. Here, instead of tomato leaves, we have violet leaves. And the combination of labdanum and patchouli supports that leather, makes it edgy and spicy. And at the end, there is no violet. So when you go to the dark side of violet with Olfactive Studio, you don't find florals in here. Let's see what happens when you go to the darker side with iris. And this is iris shot, also extrait de parfum. And again, this is a flower with some character. Mm, it smells so much in the air already. Oh yes, here we do get a flower. Iris as a flower. The opening is immediately powdery. In the description it says iris aldehyde and yes it does make sense although i'm not a fan of this note it kind of does work for me in here and there are some spices the sweetness here is more of a floral sweetness really really distant what i really love about this perfume is that it's iris centered iris is in here from the beginning to the end and this is very rare for iris perfumes because iris is very difficult to imitate and it's very difficult to bring its intensity to a certain level and it's even more difficult to keep it here it's not a delicate fragile iris that you know in fragrances this is the iris with thorns this has some character a bit of spiciness a bit of woodiness i don't really get so much almonds and carrots in here but there are definitely some interesting tones that just show up here and there. And the last shot that I have in here is rose shot. Usually I start with roses because I'm not a fan of roses, but this one I left for the end. And the reason is that I actually love it. This is probably one of the very few rose perfumes that I actually love. Hmm. Let's see why. When we imagine the dark side of flowers, rose is probably the easiest to imagine being dark. This is a flower that is associated with vampires, this is a flower that has thorns, but this is not a fragrance that has a dark rose. This is a fragrance that has an amazingly beautiful rose that is so close to the actual rose flower. Maybe that's the reason I like it so much. And this is again extrait de parfum and here it features a Turkish rose essence. This rose is made of crystals. It is transparent, translucent, it's uh, delicate. It's not really feminine because there are still some interesting nuances. The notes that uh, are in the opening are bergamot, alamai and pink pepper. And unlike in uh, violet and iris, the pink pepper here is very subtle, but bergamot is really bright. And I think that bergamot comes with a little green of salt. And that's something that uh, is bringing that rose to the transparent, to the light side rather than dark side. When it comes to the center, I get rose in full bloom. And this rose is smooth, beautiful. It's just a wow, wow rose. And I don't even know why this rose is wowing me so much. Maybe because there are some elements that just smoothen and hide those parts of uh, rosy extracts that I don't like. But somehow they created this rose 
to be so so beautiful and this is not a dark rose that you see on the photo this is a rose full of light with a little citrusy touch and uh, soft woods and mosses if i had to do the rating of uh, rose fragrances this would be number one maybe there would be number two and three but my list would be very short so when i say this is a nice rose believe me if you ask me what I'm gonna wear this Halloween, this will be my favorite poison by Christian Dior. The original one from 1985. And it still smells so amazing. I just rub my finger on the tip and it just gives me that wonderful, deep, beautiful plum that is complicated with the flowers and spices and woods. There's just so much depth in here. Uh, it was probably made by a witch. I should probably call it potion, not poison. Let me know what you are wearing this Halloween.